what's one thing that, you know, from a financial aspect that you could give as a, as a tip or a tool to help somebody figure out like what's next? Fundamentals, yeah. start the fundamental levels and then kind of build your way up. People, I say people plan their financial futures in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. They don't think anything will bad will happen to them. Yeah. It's, you know, if I keep investing into my 401k, everything will pay off when yeah. I reach age 65 or 67. It's not the case. Uh, there are things that happen that can throw you off course. I feel like that's so that's such a hard, I think certain people that's an easier concept to grasp, but for certain individuals like myself. <laughs> Truth be told. <laughs> that's a that's 100% a risk taker. What's going on? It's your host, it's your boy, Jamar Jones. I am the owner of Forever Media. I'm also a speaker and the author of the book, Change Your Circle, Change Your Life, where you can look at how to evaluate your circle and how to get into new ones. Welcome to another episode of the Forever Podcast, where we talk about things that are personal, but also talk about business because business is personal. And we're going to be diving into some awesome subject matter today of finance and family matters, not the TV show. <laughs> we'll be diving Hopefully. into some other things <laughs> with my best friend, one of the people I've known for so long since elementary school, mm -hmm. um, Adam Steckler. Welcome to the podcast, man. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention you're with Steckler Financial. Yes, that is you know, true. Ironically, Adam Steckler, Steckler <laughs> Financial. Does he own the company? No one will ever know. Now, can you spell Steckler? <laughs> <laughs> the O and the E is where I get mixed up. I get mixed up on that a little bit, a little bit. After all these years, you would think I know, would know how to spell the name. Well, it's only been, what, 18 years we've known each other? I mean, just a little bit. Yeah. Hop, skip, and a jump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And I, still, and I still don't know how to spell it. <laughs> Sometimes I get it right and autocorrect don't help me one bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not that name, nope. <laughs> That's why I have it here for everybody to see. <laughs> so yeah, man, we're going to just dive straight into it. I want to know first, what's going on in your life, man? Tell us a little about what you got going on in your world. Well, right now, uh, besides being busy with the business with Steckler Financial, I'm also married. We just, my wife and I just celebrated eight years of marriage I have three little kids, Congrats. seven, five, and one. Thank you. And um, I'm also in school to be a pastor. Mm. So that's another thing that I got going as well. So, yeah, very what about busy. your dog? And I have a Great Dane puppy <laughs> as well, yes. So <laughs> that if the toddler's not going one direction, the puppy's going the other direction. You know, it's, it's very chaotic in our household on a regular basis. Yeah. So, yeah. What are you doing on your spare time? <laughs> I don't have With spare all that, time. <laughs> all that going on. There is no spare time. It is, uh, in my spare time, I'm sleeping. Sleeping? Yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. I'm always sleeping. No, I'm not. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. So what, um, what is a typical, like, day-to-day? Day-to-day? Um, so I wear many hats in our household. Um, obviously, going through the family situation, I'm... Yeah. A husband, so helping my wife in any capacity that I can there. Taking with orders. Kids, taking <laughs> orders, yes. Whatever she needs orders. help with, you know, I, I try to. She's a school teacher, so we're both working full time. Yeah. Um, so when the morning hits, I mean, we're both ready for our morning commutes. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready mm -hmm. for that. And the kids, the two older ones are going to school with her. I'm taking the younger one to daycare. And so we get up. Right away, we're running. We're going right ahead. There's full no steam break. ahead. There is no, no break. break. It's, I hear the alarm Man. clock, and it's, it's full steam ahead. And then, you know, once I get into the regular routine in my work day, uh, settle down, you know, client calls, mm -hmm. uh, working on financial plans and portfolio management as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then as soon as I'm wrapping up, I do the same thing over again as mm -hmm. I did in the morning, just the opposite. So yeah. we're all coming back yeah. home. <laughs> Having dinner together and, you know, settling down for the night. And it's usually once dinner stops, the laptops come out and we're getting back to work. Yeah, back to so work. <laughs> it is a, it's a, it's an ongoing schedule for us. Hey, and but if you're doing what you love, that's, it's all worth it, man. We do. It's we all do. worth it. Yeah. We both really love what we do. Um, there's a piece that we're moving towards our mission in life mm. and uh, it's, it can be a 
big load at times, but um, again, as long as we're heading towards that right direction, have the energy that we need mm -hmm. to accomplish our mm -hmm. daily tasks. Yeah, you gotta stay, you gotta stay motivated and all about purpose. Uh, just talking about that yesterday, with somebody that's trying to find their purpose, mm -hmm. um, and they're looking into all different directions yeah. uh, for purpose. You know, within inside themselves, um, energy, um, universe, uh, spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they're they're diving deep, trying to figure it out. That's one of the things that I think it's important not just for us as a family, but I try to reach my clients with the same idea. Businesses have mission statements. And I think each mm. household, each family needs to have their own mission statement as well because it really ties everything together. So when you're talking about finance, when you're talking about, okay, we're going to get ready for retirement, we're going to save for our kids' college education, the overarching theme in your life has to be some sort of mission statement. Which yeah. direction are you headed to? What does retirement look like? Yeah. What If it's not college education savings, what are you preparing your kids for? Right. That should right. all fall under the mission statement. So we develop them for our businesses, but I think it's just important to develop them for your family for, as well. For a life. Yes. Life statement. Yes. Absolutely. I like that. Life statement. <laughs> don't steal that, I'm though. I'm trademark it. Don't, don't <laughs> steal that, man. You got to come with me. I'm a trademarker quicker than you are. <laughs> Hold on. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Let's, I need to trade myself real quick. Real quick, man. No, that's that's really important. Um, so let me let me take a step back here because you're in the finance world. And I think for a lot of our viewers and listeners, um, I believe that finance is something that is still not as common as it should be in yes. today's society. Yes. I feel like if somebody doesn't walk you through the door mm -hmm. of finance, you're always going to be wondering, like, kind of lost almost. <laughs> like, you just don't know nothing about it, but you have to deal with it every single day. Absolutely. Every time you make a purchase on something, now with, you know, technology, it's so easy to buy with two clicks. Yep. You know, so now transactions are at an all-time high. And I think that, people with money management it doesn't that's not something that is common unless it's really in your household yep. or if it's friends or co-workers maybe that are super into it mm -hmm. i know back in the day um jeremy and bob we used to work at a financial company uh and uh and i in it and we got on this big dave ramsey kick mm. for a second yeah um i've been there where yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know we're just like oh you know and i think it's i think that system is functional for um a lot of people but not all people okay. no now yeah. that i'm a business owner now <laughs> where yeah. it's yeah. like i have different goals i have different yeah. mindsets on stuff but where where do you feel like how did you first of all how did you get into the finance world of it. And what is your take on just finance education of this gap between people that know about finance and people that just don't know about yeah. it? Yeah. Conceptually, money seems simple, right? You have a dollar bill or you have mm -hmm. money and you say, well, how hard can it be to just to manage that? And then you have things like you start a new job where you have an employee booklet of benefits yeah. and that all encompasses money. Yeah. It's part of the paycheck that you get are right. the benefits that come with it. And now you're expected to sort through, what do I do for health insurance? What do I do mm -hmm. for my 401k? What do I do for this disability insurance? Do I have disability insurance? Yeah. All yeah. those different thoughts are now running to, through your mind and you are responsible for it. Mm. And so it is an overwhelming concept for those that haven't been raised in that environment. I was think I'm thankful because my dad has been in the financial services industry since I've been born. Mm -hmm. And so being raised with that mindset of this is what you do with your money. You don't spend all of your money. You save some of your money for the future. And then it, when it came to things like disability insurance, which I had no idea what that was for, he said, this is what you need to get because it's going to protect you. If you're sick or if you get injured, there's right. still going to be an income stream that comes in. Right. So I was blessed to have that influence in my life growing up. Now, But not a lot of people have that. Not everybody <laughs> has that. Right, exactly. And There's still 40, 50, 60 years old, still have no clue. Absolutely. How to even manage their expenses, what they have going on, like their money, cash flow. Like mm -hmm. they have no idea. So 
what started off when we were in high school mm -hmm. was they started to introduce these personal finance courses mm -hmm. into the high school curriculum, but it was only one class. Yeah. And it really wasn't in depth, mm -hmm. I think, enough to address these life issues that we have that come up. Yeah. I, I The thing I remember about the class is here's three stocks that you're picking out of the newspaper yeah. and you got to track those. And that's your experience. And maybe it was to write a check. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. don't write checks anymore, yeah. but it's, um, it's, I still write checks it, as a business. <laughs> it's that limited experience and exposure because if you weren't raised with that yeah. and you're expected, okay, now, you know, now you can go into the world and you can yeah. make something of yourself. Um, it is a very limited opportunity. And so I think personal financial education is important. I think, websites uh, are helpful, blog mm -hmm. posts are helpful for people that are aware, but you don't always know what angle they're trying to push. Yeah. And so you yeah. kind of want a non bias mm -hmm. opinion on certain money, money manner, uh, matters. Mm -hmm. And you want education on those issues as yeah. well. Yeah. And so I think it's important that, you know, as financial planners and as financial you know advisors, that we be out there that we're educating people on the importance of simple things as budgeting. Yeah. You know, my first exposure to budgeting was we were meeting with some friends and they said, Hey, have you looked into this software? It's a, a budgeting system. Yeah. And so I said, well, that's kind of cool. You know, this is around the time we had our first son. Yeah. And I was like, I was blown away because I was like, yeah, you're so unaware where the dollars are coming in and where they're going out. And once you see it, that's, that's what changes a lot of your perception on, are you are you good or not? Absolutely. You know, once mm -hmm. you see that money coming in and out, it's it's easier when you can't see it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> then you're like, I think I got that much, and I can afford this. I, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. afford this. I get another check in about two weeks. Yeah, I can afford it. But you really can't afford that. Right. Like, you right. Really can't, you right. really exactly. can't do it. Yeah. Because you're compat. Like when you see it, it's just so different. I think that a cool. This is just one of my wild ideas. I think it would be awesome for every school, and I know this is that's very tricky with different districts and classes of people and stuff like that, but every school should have some kind of uh, financial educational program because mm -hmm. uh, it's not prominent in every single school. Right. But also I feel like an outsider, so like somebody that owns a business or somebody that's involved in the financial financials of a business should come in and just give either – um, that's really good at speaking too. So somebody that actually knows how to talk, <laughs> not somebody's going to bore me to death because that's the last <laughs> thing I want. Um, but somebody that really comes in, they got ambition, passion about this, and they can talk um, to the to the youth, to the to the students mm -hmm. about real world applications when it comes to money management. Yep. I think the the disconnect between education and normal re life and reality is that. They, like you said, you learn their stocks, you got these like kind of little like mission things that they're doing, right. but they don't tie it to why should I care about this and when am I actually going to use this? Right. Like algebra. Yeah. I still haven't used it till this day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still searching. I'm, I want to get my money back, <laughs> my investment. I want to return, you know? So I, I can't. So that's, that's one of my things. Cause if I would have been in a class and saw somebody else, yeah real life experience, not some teacher that's just reading off of, of a curriculum, you know, I can then see that I'm like, okay, if I want to do something in my life or if I want to be a business owner, if I want to do this, whatever, I can now tie that to different aspects of my life. Right. I think the big push. So my wife and I, our first service opportunity together was in a high school in Milwaukee. And we were part of an after school program where we go in and we talk to some of the kids that stayed after. Mm -hmm. And part of my responsibility was talking to them about money management because I felt it was important. Yeah. Because you think about it, we spent a lot of time on college prep. Yeah. Right? Getting yeah. ready for your ACT. Yeah. The making sure that you perform well on your ACT. Let's scout out different colleges. What do you want to do for your career? But what's left? Yeah. There's no talk about money. <laughs> it's you're gonna have this and great a lot career. Of money in college. And college a lot of money. Yes, yes. And how do you deal with financial aid? Yeah. And you are you that? you know, have you looked at the labor market? What are wages for yes. that occupation that you're looking at? Yeah. Will it compensate you for the degree that you're looking to get? Yeah. And so yeah. that needs to be part of the conversation. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What um I'm a Talk about a little bit of the family business side of it. Mm. So what is it like working with your dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, 
this joke. If you've never had your boss uh, babysit your children on a Saturday <laughs> night, <laughs> that's that's kind of the experience wrapped up in a nutshell. <laughs> to me, it's not really a novel idea. Um, back, you know, hundreds of years ago, family businesses were part of the main culture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. your last name was often related to what you did for an occupation. 100%, yeah. And so I think, you know, we're kind of holding on that tradition of, of mm -hmm. the family farm, as I like to say. Yeah. This is something that my dad started. I worked with him in collaboration. We're building, and then I will eventually take over full ownership of. Mm -hmm. But um, I think in two aspects that it's really helped is communication, which is key to any relationship, mm -hmm. whether it's the communication I have with my wife mm -hmm. or it's the communication now that I have with my boss, we can be very transparent yeah. with each other yeah, yeah. because we are related. Yeah. And so we can have those, you know, Real elevated, yeah. <laughs> elevated conversations. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we get something done. We make a business decision or we make a decision that's in the best interest of the client because yeah. we weren't afraid to take a risk yeah. in explaining something mm. and really debating something and really picking out the nuances of it. Yeah, yeah. And so communication has been good. Closeness, um, he's the owner and I'm an employee mm -hmm. and we still respect those, those boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, when he's making a decision, he's coming to me yeah. and yeah, asking me what my input yeah. is. And this is a business decision. Yeah. And so I feel like I'm part owner in mm -hmm. the business as well. And so that closeness has helped as well. Well, you're getting, and you're getting that real, like just through almost osmosis of, of now everything that he brings you into, you're learning that from a business Absolutely. perspective, not just as I would say like an employee perspective. Because yep. a lot of employees don't get that benefit, um, really that advantage to yep. having somebody that's like, they're thinking on a very high level. Right. It's not just, oh, I got these tasks, these responsibilities, I'm just in my little bubble and this is all I care about right now. Right. You know, you're thinking about everything encompassing mm -hmm. the business, which is which is awesome. Yeah. What, uh, what do you feel like is, you know, you've, you've named some of the challenges, but what do you feel like is um, something, so if somebody else is in a family business, like what is um, one of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome and how did you do it? Uh, pride. <laughs> yeah, pride. Coming in as the, yeah. the young buck, right? And you yeah. think you know everything. Yeah. And it's harder when you're working with your parents, mm -hmm. all right? You have that rebellious streak when you go through your teenage yeah. years and you want to tell them off and say, I know life and yeah. you don't. I definitely did sort of, <laughs> sort Sorry, of mom. Explosion. Sorry, dad. <laughs> so <laughs> still apologize. It's all right. He day. had me. So <laughs> to balance him out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, it was that mentality that I had mm -hmm. walking into the business. My dad had, like I said, 20 plus years of experience by the time that I walked in and I was still in college. But I was kind of walking in and saying, well, I have the new thoughts of the day mm -hmm. and I know what I'm doing. Now my dad is three years out from retirement roughly. Mm -hmm. And when I hear that, it, it triggers a level of appreciation. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for yes. showing me the ropes. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be here without the guidance that you gave mm -hmm. me. And so I think a young person entering into the business, a family business, you have to set your pride apart. You have to set your pride to the side, set your pride to the side, yeah. have a, a pill of humility. Yeah. And when you're walking in and saying, you know what? I don't know everything. Yeah. I think that um, probably people going into any type of chapter in their life, they probably need to have that even not in a family business, not just that. Mm -hmm. You probably need that. If you're in your 20s, just do that exact same thing. You know, you really need to put your pride to the side and, and really be appreciative of, of opportunities and things. Because I think a lot of kind of this newer generation that's coming up that they almost feel like they're owed mm -hmm. certain things. And it's like, you no, know, you ain't work for nothing. That's nothing. Right. That's right. You got to you got to earn this. You're not yes. just owed this because this is what the market is saying or this is what I've learned in school. You got to prove it still. Right. You got to prove it and right. you need to honor those that have paved the way, you know, ahead of you to you know for those opportunities to be, you know, presented that way. Textbooks don't show you what it's like to be up at night thinking about business issues. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't sleep because you're yeah. anxious about what's going to happen around the corner. 
Textbooks aren't going to teach you that. School is not going to yeah. teach you that. That is something that someone has been through that path before knows mm-hmm. and can guide you through it. Yeah. It'll save you a lot of headaches. Being yeah. A, a lot of person. time, a lot of headaches, a lot of mistakes. Yes. Which sometimes are costly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to bear that cost. If somebody else has bore that cost for you, appreciate it, thank mm-hmm. them for it, and mm-hmm. learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. As we start talking about, you know, youth and people's decisions of like where the next step that they're going in their life. What's one thing that, you know, from a financial aspect that you could give as a, as a tip or a tool to help somebody figure out like what's next? It starts with the fundamentals. Uh, Like I shared before, uh, it's things as easy as budgeting. Yeah. It's a simple concept. Money comes in and money goes out. You have to get control of that first. So fundamentals. Fundamentals. Yeah. Start at the fundamental levels and then kind of build your way up. People, I say people plan their financial futures in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. They don't think anything will bad will happen to them. Yeah. It's, you know, if I keep investing into my 401k, everything will pay off when yeah. I reach age 65 or 67. It's not the case. Uh, there are things that happen that can throw you off course. I feel like that's, so, that's such a hard, I think certain people that's an easier concept to grasp. But for certain individuals like myself, <laughs> truth be told, <laughs> that's a that's a hundred percent a risk taker. You know, I, you know, I always think that yes, I'm I'm always seeing like the bigger outcome of something, mm-hmm. and I'm never thinking about, okay, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, what happens? Right. You know, yeah. um, it's stupid to think that way. <laughs> Because it's like you, you should be thinking about all those options and having contingencies for those things. Right. But people just don't plan that far. You know, they don't plan for, you know, things that are hypothetical. Right. And the thing is, if you have a retirement plan set up at your employer place of business and you have a family, you could be putting money in there. Yeah. Maybe it grows to 30000 40000 50000 mm-hmm. And then what happens if you die? Yeah. And now... And I'm not just talking about life insurance. Life insurance yeah, is yeah. something that you might need, but I'm talking about estate planning in yeah. general. Yeah. Do you have a will set up? Do you have, you know, trust set up if you need them? Do you have uh, powers of attorney? All those documents need to be set up, and all that starts from your finances. Yeah. An estate attorney can only draft up documents they know what you have yeah. as far as assets yeah. and liabilities. So it's part of your responsibility as part of growing up. It's part of maturity is saying, okay, Money is complex. Let's start with the fundamental stuff like budgeting. Yeah. Making sure that I master my money and my money doesn't master me. Mm -hmm. And then working up from there and seeking out counsel and advice where you can find it from people that have been through that before. So master money and not have have the money master you? Yes. Interesting. Interesting. I think I also think that's hard too. And I'm curious on your take on, I think that life beats you up so much where it's hard enough to get money in the first place. (laughs) So when people have to think about, oh, now I have to figure out how to manage this money. And now I have to figure out what do I do if I lost it all? Right. You know, it's like three layers deep that somebody can't fully comprehend. Um, What, what would you rate those, those things on a priority list if you had to? So if you had one on income and then you had another one on management and you had another one on contingency plan. Well, that's part of our business, right? Mm -hmm. Being a financial advisor, we want to take that burden off of your Mm -hmm. plate. And not necessarily where we're saying, okay, we're going to close the curtain. We're going to work on this (laughs) while you're over there working on your life. But we know that you're busy. Yeah. You have a business to maintain. You might have a family that you're going to be maintaining as well and taking care of. There's a lot of business decisions that are going through. Sometimes the last thing you want to worry about is, what 401k options do yeah. I put in, yeah. right? Or <laughs> right. what disability, do I have disability insurance? Yeah. What medical insurance policy do I pick? Right, right. That's where you sit down with the financial advisor. They can help put together a plan. And it's no longer really a financial plan. I'm not handing you a financial plan yeah. and saying you implement it. Yeah. It's an ongoing relationship. Yeah. So you can call me up. You can text me and say, hey, I have this decision that I have to make with my money. Can you help me out or give me some direction right. as far right. as what to do? And that's what we sit down and we say, okay, let's look at it. I, last week, I just looked at somebody's employee benefit packet and mm-hmm. we went through it. And I said, this probably seems like the best decision right here. Mm-hmm. This is my recommendation. But my role is not to say, I'm the chief of your house. <laughs> You're still the chief of your house. 
I am a consultant, and so Let's I come so. in. <laughs> Otherwise, you got to pay some bills. <laughs> <laughs> you have some additional responsibilities yeah. that you have to take. So you take the trash out, <laughs> cook me some dinner. <laughs> Dry cleaning, laundry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you better start paying in other ways, <laughs> other dividends <laughs> in the house. <laughs> but we come in and we're there as your advisor. We're a servant mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. And so you finally make the decision. But it's helpful to have somebody that can guide you in that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had somebody make a, like a, a list of bad decisions again and again and again, but you advise them not to do it? <laughs> Not necessarily. I've had, I've had clients where I've made recommendations mm -hmm. and they just don't follow through with them. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they're committed and they say, yes, I'm committed to this decision. Mm -hmm. And it could be a number of factors. Maybe they just don't have the energy, the time to implement it. Mm -hmm. It's a multitude of factors. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's some time that it, it just takes a, a few knocks before somebody wakes up and says, yeah, I, I need help. Yeah. <laughs> I need help, right? So Well that's, that's usually when you call somebody when you need help. Yes. It's not beforehand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you got it's when you got no <laughs> You don't call lifeguard when you're swimming perfectly yeah. fine. <laughs> yes, I get it. <laughs> and that's just the reality of life. I think that, you know, just people they think about they're reactionary and not proactive. Right. Right. You know, and their approach when they it's just better to be uh, as proactive as you can. Absolutely. You know, um, I know it's tough. It's tough because things sometimes they're changing so rapidly and it's, it's hard to plan for literally every little thing, Right. but it's something that you want, um, to definitely consider, right. You know, and not just, not just finance, but in everything, Yes. everything that you're doing, you got to be able to try to plan as much as you can. Um, I, for myself, I'm a planner to a certain degree. I'm more like plan as things flow. Fluid. Yeah. I'm a fluid planner. <laughs> 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 like I have goals. I have ambitions. I have things. I have, you know, targets I'm trying to hit. But right. as I'm going through those, I'm able to flow and adapt. Right. You know, as I'm going through those, I'm not tied down into something where I'm just like, oh my God. You know, some people, like if the smallest thing gets changed, there's like, they just don't know how to Right. even cope. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> this, uh, the exit ramp that I normally take is closed. Ah, I'm going to be late and that's going to throw off my whole day and then I don't know what to do and they're just freaking out. Like, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, I, I'll be like, all right, cool. It's, it's closed. I'm going somewhere else. And that's part of the interesting part of working with different clients. Yeah. Everybody has a different personality. Yeah, yeah. And some people do things so naturally for them. Yeah. They're ambitious. They want to do different things. And sometimes their mind is more scattered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have more of an administrative organizational mind. And so I can yes, kind of look do. at that <laughs> and say, how do Known we. For 18 years, people. <laughs> and he is very organized <laughs> and on time. He was on here on the dot. <laughs> so you. <laughs> You need to balance that, right? You yeah. need the risk takers in life yeah. that are ambitious, that are willing to go out there and get what needs to yeah. be done. Yeah. But you also need the people that sit back and they write the manuals. Oh, they're both so valuable. They write the plans yes. and they yeah. say, okay, I'm going to take what you're trying to do here and put it into these categories. Yes. So it makes sense to you. So you can look at it and say, oh yeah, that's what I do on a daily basis. Yeah. And you just put it in a, in a yes. spreadsheet or whatever the case is, <laughs> a chart, a mind chart. So it's digestible. It's a digestible <laughs> and it's actionable. Yeah, it's actionable. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Man, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. What, uh, what's one last takeaway that you can give, um, I guess like people that are watching, what's one last takeaway? I would say seek out help. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Um, don't be afraid to ask. You know, people struggle with different areas and one of them might be money. Mm -hmm. So if it is money, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to seek out help mm -hmm. from people that either have had experience with money, that have been successful with money, or mm -hmm. a financial advisor that you trust, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, don't be afraid to ask. Be humble. Understand that you don't know everything. And um, time is money, right? You can only spend sure so is. many, so much time working on. Now I'm trying to get more of that time. Things that you're working on, right? <laughs> and so we want to make the best use of our time, which is a resource. And, mm -hmm. and uh, part of that is divvying up different responsibilities and making sure that um, 
that everybody is doing the best that they can that yeah. they can exceed at different levels 100 percent well, thank you so much, man, for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Um, where can people find you at? How can they get connected to you? They can find me at stecklerfinancial.com. And um, if they want to reach out to us, my email address is adam at stecklerfinancial.com. You can spell that, it right here. That's <laughs> O-E. And uh, if you want to drop in our office, we're right in Brookfield, 125th Sweet. in Burleigh. So feel free to drop in. Cool. Well, thank you so much. And um, hopefully today, everybody listening and watching really learned and grabbed some some golden nuggets that they can take home with them and be able to implement directly into their life. And uh, if you are watching this and you want to actually listen to more of this, please make sure that you subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and also the the Spotify, as far as we're streaming on all platforms, Google, Apple as well, and get involved, you know, get engaged, start commenting, start networking around what we have going on here. And we're going to keep putting out this content um, for you every single time and definitely know that you can always get your information here till the next episode. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell for more amazing content that we're gonna be putting out. And don't forget, you can change your circle to change your life.